Now, I didn't know that part of it, you see. <clears throat> but I don't think most of the Hebrews actually knew that those was part when they gave the names. And here we see, see Reuben, see here son. And let his followers be many. He is the firstborn, and he must be my might and my beginning. The light, the life, the word of my strength, the excellence of dignity and of power. But the beginning of my life, my firstborn, is unstable like water and will not excel. This is Jacob, very cross with Reuben. And he says that Reuben, see ye a son, the son that the, his mother bragged about, he's not going to excel because he's unstable as water because he defiled his couch. So he now says to him, yeah, he says, he will not excel because he defiled my bed and he broke my covenant of blessings, multiplication and fruitfulness. That's what it means when he said to Reuben, you will not excel, you, you're like water running wild. Nobody can stop water from running. If you, water runs, I'll tell you something, it's a very big problem to stop it from running, even when it's a lot. But what was happening is, as I said, that he defiled all those things, the firstborn, the first fruits, the first, first of everything. He defiled the position the tenth position of the tithe that was represented by the burnt offering, the first fruits and so on. He defiled that and that was, that part is holy and he made it unholy, him as Reuben, in his life. But in doing so he also defiled the covenant of blessings and multiplication because he attacked, to use that word for want of a better term, he attacked the word, the, the, the principle of the tithe. He attacked the principle of the tithe when he did that. He then defiled that. And that means that he also dishonored the blessings, the covenant of blessings, multiplication and fruitfulness by committing fornication with Jacob's concubine. And then he speaks to Simeon and Levi. And these two are brothers in cruelty. Why the Bible mentions them to, together is that you remember that they also had a sister Dinah. Now Dinah was stolen by a uh, person and his son from a, another area. And they dishonored her. And eventually they when when Levi and Simeon took their servants and all kinds of other war people and they went to these guys and these guys said, no, 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 please don't do anything to us, but let us be friends and my son Shechem wants your, your sister for a wife and let us exchange wives and daughters amongst each other. <coughs> and these two actually agreed with them, but later on went back and slaughtered all the males of that area. Excuse me. And that was the wrong that they did, Simeon and Levi. They were brothers in cruelty. The Lord has heard. That is what Simeon means. The Lord has heard that I am unloved and obligated borrowing. Obligated borrowing. That is what Levi means. Now this is going to become a lot more um, interesting when we come to Levi or Leviathan, Leviathan eventually. Then you, then you, then things really start getting in interesting. But for the time being, for now, <laughs> Levi means obligated borrowing, by which men are made poor. Obligated borrowing borrowing in obligation you are obligated to borrow because if you can't eat and you don't have money you steal now if you if you are a skilled person you have to go and work 
to get money to feed your face. Isn't that so? Because you need food. And that is, <coughs> it means men are made poor by that obligated borrowing. And it is also called, in another form in the scriptures, to slay a man. To slay a man. Uh, a man that becomes poor by the system means that that man was slayed by the system. That's why God wanted three cities of refuge to be built for the manslayers. In other words, for the poor people, the aimless, the rejected, those that can't handle the economic system of the world. That's why God wants them to start a city of refuge so that these people, the manslayers, or those that have been made poor by the system, can go into those cities and live there, such as the ark, just in the bypassing of it. <coughs> so now, and in their self-will, they were, that is now here, an obligated borrowing, Simeon and Levi, they were, they hamstrung the means by which they could prosper. In other words, by doing what they've done, in going back, lying and deceitfully going back, agreeing first of all with Shechem and his father, uh, going back and killing all the males, taking the children and their wives and their livestock and all kinds of other things, that was wrong of them to do that. And Jacob told them that, and they will not be fruitful in that particular situation, and because he was absolutely mad with these two guys. And in doing so, they hamstrung the means by which they could prosper. In other words, they put a spanner in the wheel of the economic system of God. Now listen carefully, it is very, very serious for us to understand this, that by doing what they have done, in doing so they actually hamstrung the the opportunity and the privilege and that um, means, that method by which they will prosper. But what they did was cursed is the fever of gain and its ability to torture. Cursed, cursed. That's what it means with these two guys' names. Cursed is the fever of gain and his ability to torture. Now this is what is built into what is meant by him and, the, and that, that which Jacob is now telling him. He says, cursed are the means that, that brings about uh, the fever to gain and torture people. The Lord will disperse and scatter both the ability to gain and its efforts. He will scatter the ability to gain and its efforts. He will scatter both. He will do something to stop it from happening, to gain something, and in a worldly manner, in a world system like Simeon and Levi did it. He will stop it from happening that way. Then he speaks to Judah, may your hand be on the neck of your enemies. You are a lion's whelp or a cub. The scepter shall not depart from praise and nor the lawgiver from his walk. Until Shiloh comes and all the people shall obey him and he will fasten his donkey to the choice vine. Now that rings a bell with everybody, isn't it? where the, the little colt was fastened to the vine and uh, Jesus said, go and fetch that little colt that anybody asks you, said the master is in need of him and he had brought the little colt to him he got onto the colt and he rode into Jerusalem so, and J Jesus of course coming from the tribe of Judah uh, is spoken about here prophetically so don't forget that 
For you are a lion's whelp, the scepter shall, scepter shall not depart from praise, nor the law give it from his walk, until Shiloh comes and all the people shall obey him. He will fasten his donkey to the choice vine. Then he speaks to Dan. Dan shall judge, protect the purpose by law. He will protect the purpose by law, guarding the avenues of gain. In other words, by statute, they will make laws to protect those things that they can gain. In other words, there will be a law to obligate the borrowing. In other words, they will get a law made and, and established that will steal God's beauty and his possession. And then shall judge. Now there is a positive side which we will see later on, a positive side of these kids. But Jacob was, he, he didn't mince his words. He spoke to these kids straight from his heart and what they had done. And he says that will be the hamstrung of an ox. That will be the thorn in their flesh, what they've done wrong. <coughs> so he says, Dan shall judge and protect the purpose by law, guarding the avenues of gain and stay in close pursuit to prevent any attempt to weaken the drive to gain. In other words, Dan will be in that position where he will forever pursue the, 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 the laws. He will be in a law enforcer that will pursue anybody that tries to stop this avenue or this way of gaining something. He will definitely do that. And that is what is, when he lies in wait in the avenue like a snake biting the heels of the, of, of the rider, the horse rider, and him falling back. That is what that all means. <coughs> Gad. Where Dan Gad is now, distribution, Gad means distribution fortune, was smothered by a hostile force. That is the truth. The distribution force or fortune was smothered by a hostile troops or force. But in the end, distribution of fortune triumphed. And blessed are those who expand the fortunes and treasures of God. What is he talking about here? Blessed are those who expand the fortunes and the treasures of God. Remember that I said that God expects from the believer. He expects from us, you and I, as believers, born again, baptized, spiritual believers, to stop the world from stealing God's beautiful possessions. We are obligated to do that. God is a duty of the Christian believer to do that. How do we do that? We have to speak God's power. We have to bring it into existence, calling those things which are not as though they were. And he says, blessed you are those who expand the fortunes and treasures of God. Now I want you to go to me, with me to Deuteronomy 33. It is just a little bit on me. Exodus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. In Deuteronomy 33 we see that Mo Moses' final blessing on Israel. Now they have become a nation. They are now a nation. Now Moses speaks to the tribes of Israel. Now this is the blessing with which Moses, the man of God, blessed the children of Israel before his death. And he said, The Lord came from Sinai and dawned on them from Seir, and he shone forth from Mount Paran. And he came with ten thousands of saints, and his right hand came a fiery law for them. Yes, he loves the people. All his saints are in your hand. 
and I sit down at your feet. Everyone receives your words. Moses commanded a law for us. That was when the Ten Commandments was made. A heritage of the congregation of Jacob. And he was king in Jehurun, Jeshurun, when the leaders of the people were gathered, all the tribes of Israel together. Then he starts off in verse 6 with Reuben. And he says, let Reuben live and not die, nor let his men be few. In other words, Jacob told Reuben not to excel. You will not excel because you are unstable as water. Because, and you defiled your father's bed. And here Moses comes when they were now a nation. And he says to them, in a voice of God to them, from God for them. He says, let Reuben live and not die. And no let his men be few. Then he says, and this he said of Judah, Hear, Lord, the voice of Judah, and bring him to his people. Let his hands be sufficient for him, and may you be a help against his enemies. And of Levi he said, Let your Thummim and your Urim be with your Holy One. Now these are, are very, if you want to know what it means, you, you can look it up. Uh, I don't know at this very point in time, I've forgotten what it means, but it is like uh, their, 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 their dignity and all those kind of things. What to do with that? Whom you tested at Massa and with whom you contended at the waters of Meribah, who says of the father and mother, I have not seen them, nor did he acknowledge, did he acknowledge his brothers, or know his own children. For they, that is now when he speaks to uh, the, the children of, of, of or the tribes of Jacob. Who says of his father and mother, I have not seen them, nor did he acknowledge his brothers or know his own children, for they, are, they have observed your word and kept your covenant. They shall teach Jacob your judgments and Israel your law and they shall put incense before you and a whole burnt sacrifice on your altar. Bless his substance, Lord, and accept the work of his hands. Strike the loins of those who rise against him and of those who hate him, that they rise not again. Moses comes and he knows that God had now raised up these twelve sons to become a nation, and now that they are a nation, they are now going. He, they are entering into the land of Canaan and Moses is now ready to die. He's on his way out of this world. He's going to go to be with his father. And then he says, Of oh, Benjamin, he said, <coughs> The beloved of the Lord shall dwell in safety by him, who shelters him all the day long, and he shall dwell between his shoulders. And of Joseph, he said, Blessed of the Lord is his land, with the precious things of heaven, with the dew and the deep lying beneath, with the precious fruits of the sun, with the precious produce of the months, and with the best things of the ancient mountains, with the precious things of the everlasting hills, with the precious things of the earth and its fullness, and the favor of him who dwelt in the bush. Let the blessing come on the head of Joseph and on the crown of the head of him who was separated from his brother from his brothers his glory is like a firstborn bull now you remember that 1 Chronicles 5 1 says that the first the birthright of Reuben was given to the sons of Joseph and here it comes and it shows us here his glory is like the firstborn bull and his horns like the horns of the wild ox. Together with them he shall push the peoples to the ends of the earth, and they are the ten thousands of Ephraim, and they are the thousands of Manasseh. And of Zebulun he said, Rejoice, Zebulun, in your going out, and Issachar in your tents. They shall call the, the peoples to the mountain, and there they shall offer sacrifices of righteousness, for they shall partake of the abundance of the seas and of treasures, hidden in the sand. Treasures of the seas and treasures hidden in the sand. Now, 
you might think that you uh, you have an, a problem understanding that but it is very easy there is precious stones gems and above all things it is oil oil is preserved and it is in the sand and it is there where, 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 where Joseph's part his tribe is living he says there will be oil beneath there will be oil beneath look what he says later on and of Gad he said blessed is he who enlarges Gad he dwells as a lion and tears the arm and the crown of his head and he provided the first part for himself because a lawgiver's portion was reserved there and he came with the heads of the people he administered the justice of the Lord and his judgments with Israel and of Dan he said Dan is a lion's whelp and he shall he shall leap from Bashan and of Naphtali he said Naphtali satisfied with favor and full of the blessing of the Lord possessed the west and the south and to Asher of Asher he said Asher is most blessed of the sons let him be favored by his brothers and let him dip his foot in oil now I've looked it up and I've got this little book from us. I think Trevor brought it to me one day that there was a, a little book that was explaining this particular land map of Israel and in those days that uh, ashes was look, uh, looked actually like Italy like a foot and the toe of, of, of Asher was dipped in this oil and this blessing of the Israelites it's, it's absolutely amazing what they said I don't believe everything that is said but I believe what the Bible tells me and the Bible says it is as close as you can get it so he tells us here and let him dip his foot in oil and your sandals shall be iron and bronze and as your days so shall your strength be there is no one like the God of Jeshurun who rise the heavens to help you and his excellency on the clouds and the eternal God is your refuge and underneath are the everlasting arms and he will thrust out the enemy from before you and will say destroy <coughs> then Israel shall dwell in safety in the fountain of Jacob alone in a land of grain and new wine his heaven shall also drop dew happy are you O Israel who is like you a people saved by the Lord who is like you the shield of your help and the sword of your majesty your enemies shall submit to you and you shall tread down their high places this is it you shall tread down their high places and we know now by now everybody should know that high places means marketplaces the marketplaces of the world shall be tread down by the economic system of God it shall be taken over by the economic system of God now after that Moses died but let us go to Ezekiel the, two, the 48th chapter <coughs> Ezekiel it's a little bit on in the Bible here we see how the borders of the land of Israel was divided amongst the twelve uh, sons and the tribes of Israel <coughs> here we find now you must remember this I hold it in the back of your mind that the sons of Reuben the firstborn of Israel he was indeed the firstborn but because he he defiled his father's bed his birthright was given to the sons of Joseph and the son that who is the son of Israel or Jacob so that the gene genealogy is not listed according to the birthright now here we have a situation that you and I have to really get into we have to understand this now 
I'm not going to read the whole chapter of chapter 48 of Ezekiel, but I am going to give you some very important uh, uh, information right here. In chapter 48 and verse 30, he tells us the gates of the city and its name. These are the exits of the city on the north side measuring 4,500 cubits. The gates of the city be, shall be named after the tribes of Israel. The three gates northward, one gate for Reuben, one gate for Judah, and one gate for Levi. On the east side, 4,500 cubits, the three gates, one gate for Joseph, one gate for Benjamin, and one gate for Dan. On the south side, measuring 4,500 cubits, three gates, one gate for Simeon, one gate to Issachar, and one gate for Zebulun. And on the west side, 4,500 cubits with the three gates, one gate for Gad, one gate for Asher, and one gate for Naphtali. All the way around shall be 18,000 cubits, and the name of the city from that day shall be, The Lord is there. Or if you want to know it in Hebrew, Jeshua Shama, or Yahweh Shama. That's what it means, the Lord is there. Now, we know that we have the description of the New Jerusalem, for instance, in Revelations, that they had, the city had 12 foundations and the 12 foundations were uh, on, built on the basis or the apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, you find that through that 12, they, that new city is described in the Bible. It is described with 12 precious stones. You know, the amethyst and the crystallite and, and, and so forth. All those precious stones that, mentioned, that the Bible mentions for us. And this is what the Bible is giving us. Now, I'm not going to go to Revelations, to Revelations 19 and so forth, and about the New Jerusalem, and from there on to Revelations, the 22nd chapter, that describes the New Jerusalem. Now, what happens here is, From then on me, we have now a situation that the whole of the New Jerusalem or the Jerusalem that we spoke about, remember I'm, I spoke about the beginnings. Now let us, I want to show you something about this that I have worked out for, for your purposes, uh, which, is, which is absolutely astonishing when you think about it. And I'm going to go to to the first chapter of Matthew a little bit on from there but I'm not going to read out of Matthew right now because it is, it is, it is a massive information that, that we are getting here all I'm going to talk to you now is to explain what this Jerusalem, this new Jerusalem is looking like that it was coming from the 12 sons of Jacob, eventually becoming the 12 tribes of Israel. And look at this now. Reuben being the first, the beginning and the word is one. Now, Ron, what does the, the Bible tell us in John 1, the first chapter? This, this is where everything starts. In John 1, the first chapter of John, the Bible tells us that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That is the beginning, okay? And the first. God is the first and the last, okay? He is the Alpha and the Omega. Now, He is the beginning and the end. Now, we're dealing here with the beginning, okay? Now, the beginning, which is the first, and the word is one thing. The beginning and the first and the word is one thing. That means that that is what Reuben and Esau and those guys did that dishonored the firstlings, the firstborn, and all those string of names that I've just given you. 
They dishonored not only those, but they dishonored God himself because he is the first. He is the beginning. He is the word. They dishonored the word. The word and God was together at that particular point in time and the word and God is one. Don't forget that. The beginning and the end created all things. The Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. All things that you see with your eyes here today was created by God, the Word, who is the beginning, who is the first, who is... Don't let me run too fast ahead of time. And then this first and the beginning the Alpha, I'm dealing with the beginnings, the first, or the firstborn, or the tithe, or the Elijah, or the John the Baptist, or the messenger, or the forerunner, all of these represents the firstborn, or the firstling, or the first fruits. That was dishonored by anybody that was changing it. That's why we, the Israelites had to redeem the tenth animal. When they chased the tenth animal, remember I said to you that every tenth animal became the, the, the burnt offering or the holy sacrifice. And if that tenth animal was blemished, they couldn't use the ninth animal or the eleventh animal because the tenth position was holy. Now the tenth position became the first things or the first things, okay? Is where the light is. Now the place is the blood. Place are also homes and houses. Now you don't know these things, but this is what it is. It becomes this in a very wide spectrum of explanation or explaining of what the blood is and where do you find the life and the light of men. Because when you, are, when you become a born again baptized spiritual believer, you are a home, a temple of the Holy Spirit. So the blood is a home, a temple for the life that you have to transmit and transfer to your brethren. Therefore it is also houses. Now what, what do we see here now? The beginning then is in a place. The beginning of, of something is in a place. And it is in the blood. The word is in a place. The blood. Life is in a place, the blood. Light is in the blood. The light, the life, the beginning, the word of God is inside this place where it stays. That's where it has to be transmitted from to your brethren to come out of his poverty-stricken condition. <laughs> now, what do we have here? Let me explain something to you. He says, the blood is in the house of God. The house of God is in Bethel. Hello? Are we there? The pastor is the place, the blood is in Bethel, in the house of the vineyard. And I've got a stream of phrases and explanations here, but I'd rather sort of explain that to you. That the blood or the word is in a place which is in the blood and the life is in the place, the blood, light is in that blood and the blood is the, the where the light is. And as the positive and negative element also you get the absorption of light and you get the emission of light. When you absorb something, you, uh, you shine as light and it is no wonder the Bible says that the, that the devil transforms himself as an angel of light. Now when you go to the bank and you borrow 5,000 5, rand, uh, that has light, because it brings light to you, but it's got dark sentences in it, or sinister schemes. Now I'm talking biblical scriptural language here, which was never ever developed in the past for us 
super simple oaths. But I'll tell you something, I sidestepped the devil many, many times. It was like a minefield that I had to run through. And when I got to the other side, I can tell you now, I found out what I had to find out about this. And the Lord was very good to me about it. <laughs> now he says to us, he says, what is this all about, this blood in or that a place or the location where you find the life or the light or that part which is from each man's brother's hand I will require the life of man in other words you have to transmit life to another person and you have to deal with these situations in a much better way you have to make sure that the guys that are poverty stricken gets out of that poverty stricken condition So the blood is in Bethel, in the house of the vineyard, in the house of bread, in the house of bricks, woods, the house of the valleys, in the house of the hills, in the house of the pastures. Not the pastors, pastures, P-A-S-T-U-R-E-S, and every pastor thinks that his house is the house of God and that's where you've got to tithe. But the life is in the past true. The beginnings in Bethel and all of the above, the world is in all the houses above, the light and life is in all the houses above. The cup is in the new covenant. The cup in the new covenant. Listen to me. <laughs> the new covenant is located in the houses in the blood and all of the above the blood is in the place of the new covenant the new covenant is in Bethel Bethel is God's house that you see in Malachi he said that bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse so that there can be food in my house <coughs> I am the way the truth and the life the new covenant I am the way, the truth, and the new covenant. Life is light, the new covenant created all things. The new covenant has to create things. You know why? How God, how Jesus was raised from the dead? By the principle of the power of the Spirit of God, which is uh, by each man's brother's hand, I will require the life of man. By that spirit, by the spirit of grace, Jesus was raised from the dead. Are you still there or must I go home? Okay, I'll go just now, man. Now, let us see a bit further on here. I'll finish just now, man. Give me a minute. Now, the new covenant is the light. The new covenant created all things. The new covenant is the brother's keeper. Here we come to a new facet of it. The new covenant is the brother's keeper or the shepherd of the sheep. You shall love your brother as you love yourself is the new covenant. The shepherd of the sheep created all things. The brother's keeper created all things. The keeper is in the light, the life, the word and the beginning. That is where you find the shepherd of the sheep. Loving your brother as you love yourself is in the blood. The shepherd of the sheep is in the blood. The shepherd of the sheep is in the blood, the beginning, the word, the life, and the light, the first, and the alpha. <coughs> now we haven't got time to go and now explain how the human cell works. We will get to that next time we get to to this particular type of thing, this explanation of the Word of God and the Scripture. Now you can see how the Israelites formed the first, the beginning of all things. They had to transfer and transmit all this knowledge to the Gentiles. But you know what happened? They did not accept Christ as the, as the Savior. They did exactly the same thing as what uh, uh, Reuben did. 
dishonored, defiled the firstborn, the first, the last. He, he, they dishonored like, like, like everybody, like Esau did. And I'll tell you something now is that the church today is also defiling the firstborn. How's that? Amen. We're dishonoring the firstborn. You know why? Because of we do not pay our tithes. <laughs> Two verses in the Bible. 23,760 in the Old Testament and some 9,240 in the New Testament. Let's get on with the job. Amen. Let's stand.